Okay, once again, good morning everyone. Thank you for joining today. I'm Intan Murni as the MC. And before we start, let's ask for blessing. Let's pray first in our heart. Amen. Welcome to virtual lecture series, Second Hidden Gym of Life. I also want to greet our wonderful speaker today, Mr. Sheikh Raihan Ul Islam from Davodil International University, Bangladesh. Hello, Mr. Sheikh. Hello. Okay. Hello, Intan. It's really great to see you. How are yes. you today? You feeling good? Yeah, it's very nice today. And I'm very delighted that I am joining here today for a lecture uh, for the students of uh, University Satmanjaya, Yogyakarta. Okay. And welcome to everyone. Okay, thank you. It's awesome. Okay, guys, before I go to next agenda, I would like to give a little spoiler to make you guys feel more interest in this session. Today, Mr. Shed will share his wonderful experience and journey about being a good leader. And if you guys look into our team today, maybe you guys wondering, what's the first jump? Why is it has to be a second? Is it about money or is it about love? And maybe it's something else. We don't know yet. But the first thing I'll make sure to you, this session will be interesting and today you will not laugh empty handed. Okay, so please make yourself comfortable. And there's one person who has already waiting to greet all of you. So please welcome Ibu Rini Harjanti from Partnership and Promotion Office, Universitas Atmajaya, Yogyakarta. Hello, Hello. everyone. Thank you for joining in this great event. And it is an, uh, an honor for us to get good response from Davodil International University for joining in partnership big program, a celebration of anniversary of Universitas Atmajaya Yogyakarta. Virtual lecture series is one of activity on partnership program. And in this program, we invite several partner from Indonesia, also from out of Indonesia, to be involved in several events during in this year. Once again, we thank to Davodil International University, especially to Mr. Shet Rehan, who always welcome my program offering. And I hope our collaboration will, can be developed in next. And uh, a bunch of thanks uh, I present to my beloved student staff, Intan, Ame, and the others, who are always ready to organize with me many, many events of the partnership affairs. And of course, uh, appreciation, I say to you all participants, welcome in this great session. I hope you will get more benefit to make yourself more shining. Okay, success for all, for all of you. And don't forget to get many benefits of, of this session. Thank you. Thank you very much, I see. All right, thank you very much, Burini. Okay, thank you for your wonderful speech today. Okay. Let me read the rule first about today's session before we go to Mr. Shed Raihan session. Okay, operator, please, the rule. Okay, so guys, this is the rules for today. All audio, all audio of participants will be mute during the session. And participants can ask questions using chat box during lecturing session and will be answered at Q&A session. MC will choose name of participant who has already typed question to ask directly, live. Okay, and participant must fill an exit ticket that consists of five questions, minimum of three questions answered correctly to get a certificate. The link will be displayed at the end of the session. Okay, jadi uh, kalau aku boleh translate it, teman-teman, nanti boleh uh, buter videonya, dibuka video kamera kalian, tapi audionya nanti akan di-mute selama sesi berlangsung. Dan teman-teman yang mau bertanya selama nanti Mr. Raihan uh, menjelaskan materi, boleh langsung bertanya saja di chat box selama dia menjelaskan. Dan nanti akan dipilih, akan saya pilih, siapa yang mau ngomong nanti untuk di live session. Oke, okay? jadi nanti jangan lupa kalau di live session, kalau dipilih namanya, tolong di-unmute. 
Oke, okay, di-unmute uh, suaranya dan videonya juga dibuka. Dan teman-teman yang mau mendapatkan sertifikat hari ini, jangan lupa diperhatikan materinya dengan baik, karena sertifikat hari ini tidak serta-merta diberikan. Nanti di exit link pada akhir sesi akan ada lima pertanyaan. Paling tidak harus menjawab tiga yang benar supaya bisa mendapat sertifikat. Oke? Okay? Oke. Okay. Got it, everyone. Dan teman-teman, di sini aku belum merasakan euforia kalian. Aku belum merasakan semangat kalian untuk ikut materi pada hari ini. Karena ini materi sangat bagus yang akan disampaikan. Fresh de freshly delivered from Bangladesh, from Dakodil International University. So, come on, guys. Come on. Please type your name, say hi. Just, you can uh, type actively in the chat box. How do you feel? What do you think about this session? Okay? And please, let's make it more interactive, okay? And let, let's make yourself comfortable. Okay, so after the rules about today's session, I would like to read a short CV about Mr. Rehan. Okay, oh, okay. So, so ada pertanyaan dari Natasha Tarigan. Ini sampai akhir apakah bahasa Inggris? Jadi, so Mr. Rehan will, uh, will share with us, will teach us in English. Tapi nanti kalau teman-teman mau bertanya, you may ask in Indonesia, and I would like to help you to translate it into English. Oke, okay? jadi kalau mau bertanya, jangan takut, boleh di-type dalam bahasa Indonesia, nanti aku bantu translate-kan. Oke, okay, teman-teman? Baik, so this is the short CV of Mr. Rehan. Oke, okay, the first, educational background. In 2013, he finished his Bachelor of Art Honors in Daffodil International University, Bangladesh. In 2014, he finished his Master of Art also in Daffodil International University and also about his experience. Since 2009, he became an independent short filmmaker and an assistant producer at Zero Point Media during 2011 to until 2012. He served as a radio jockey using during 2013 in campus radio of DIU for three months and became a creative audiovisual teacher in Daffodil International School during 2000-2015. Also, since 2013 until now, he leading in the international affairs at Daffodil International University. Okay, that's about short CV for Mr. Rehan. So, the operator, operator can please stop, the sh stop sharing. Okay, teman-teman semua jangan lupa hari ini gali info sebanyak-banyaknya, mumpung ada Mr. Shed Rehan. Okay? Okay, so please welcome Mr. Shet Rehan from Daffodil International University, you may start your session. Okay, so thank you very much, uh, Ms. Intan, for your nice, very welcoming. And also, Madam Rini, for uh, your very nice speech and welcoming me in this uh, today's uh, virtual lecture series. I'm very delighted to join here and uh, talk to the students of University Satma Jaya Jogjakarta. And first of all, I uh, congratulate the university for their uh, 55 uh, anniversary. And of course, the university is doing very great. And our university, Daffodil International University, is a very good partner, very active partner of your university. And we are very happy that in last few years, we have done so many um, collaborative activities, such as exchanges, scholarship, and others. And one of our students, uh, uh, Mr. Arifin, is also studying in your university. And it's really great that uh, also I couldn't join in your university in last, uh, my previous visits. But of course now, uh, at least virtually, I'm now here uh, to talk to the university students and I'm ready to start my session. So let me share my PowerPoint presentation and welcome to all the participants, the students. And I want to uh, make it more interactive. So whenever you have some questions, you can put it on the chat box as uh, Ms. Intan said. So let's uh, make it more friendly. It's not that very serious, okay? So uh, thank you everyone for joining today's uh, virtual presentation, virtual lecture. This is Mr. Said Rahanul Islam. I'm working as the assistant director of international affairs at Daffodil International University. I'm, I'm an alumni of this university, as you have already um, listened from Intan, uh, from my uh, CV. I'm also a, a graduate of this university. I completed my honors and masters and working uh, in this university since last eight years. Uh, and uh, today, I'm happy to present my lecture. Uh, the title of the lecture is The Second Hidden Gem of Life. So we will talk about the leadership 
and what actually the youth, the young generation, the people like you all need to practice for a better career, for a better uh, life, and for a, uh, for a good career, actually. So let me go uh, forward to the presentations and let's make it more interactive. And I thank you for joining. So at the very beginning of uh, our today's talk, let me ask you the question that is actually the, the main question. The first one is, what is the first hidden gem of life? What do you think? You can turn on your mic, you can also tell me. Uh, what is the first hidden gem of life? What do you think? I think you know about the hidden gem. Hidden gem is means something that is actually not in front, but actually in inside somewhere that is actually empowering uh, the whole area. So what do you think? What is the hidden gem of life? Maybe for your life. Maybe I can check the chat box. Uh, you can turn on your microphone and you can also tell me if you have any answer. Okay, so one of you said family, love, honesty, uh, creativity, okay, experience, life itself, okay. So let me go to the second slide and uh, reveal the truth. So the first hidden gem of life is actually life itself. That is actually from my own point of view. Because why? Because we cannot see the life, but we can feel it. We can actually work with the life. But the life itself is the hidden gem. We cannot feel it, but it is actually running ourselves. Without life, we cannot move. We cannot do anything. So life itself is a hidden gem of yourself, of myself, and if for everyone. So my second question is, what is the second hidden gem of life? What is actually leading our life? And how can we lead a better life, an active life? What do you think? Okay, the Quinta answered power, ourselves. Someone answered vision, dream, mindset, good answer. Any others? Bravery, future, personality, self-confidence, spirit. Okay, you are opening your mind. You are opening your heart. You are opening your brain. So the answer is the brain. The brain is actually the second hidden gem of life. How and why? So let me tell you why brain is the second hidden gem of life. Because without brain, you cannot lead your life. And the brain is actually the leader of your life. How? You see that with the brain, without brain, without the power, without its activeness, you cannot do the works. You don't know after this session where you will go. Your brain will actually lead you. You don't know what to do after giving this presentation. You don't know what uh, the answer will come after my presentation in your mind. So the brain is actually leading you. The brain is giving you what to do in the same time, like I'm breathing, I'm giving my talk, I'm, this, I'm uh, looking at the camera. So brain is actually leading everything. That means in your life, the brain is the leader. So my first point is to be a good leader, you have to work as like a brain, like your whole body. I'm moving my hands. I'm thinking something, I'm looking at you, I'm smiling, and everything is the coming, the command is coming from the brain. That means brain is actually the leader of our life. So the brain is leading the life. That means the second uh, hidden gem of life, the brain is leading the first hidden gem. So that is why the brain is like a leader. So everyone attending here today need to know that we have to be a leader as like a brain so that you can lead a better, a good life. Moving to the next presentation, I'd like to give you some questions for the whole sessions that you don't need to answer, but you need to keep in, in your mind so that you can think with the other uh, next stage part of the sessions. My first question is, are we using our brain the most? Because most of the cases, we don't use our brain. Like some part, okay, let's don't think about it. Let's do in a simple way not do something big way, but we are doing, uh, my question is, are we using our brain the best? 
because it's free of charge. You don't need to pay for it. You don't need to uh, give any charge for it to, to your brain. You can think as much as you can. So be like a brain and uh, make it more active. So my second question is, do you use our brain more effectively? Not just using it, but more effectively for a better version of ourselves. Because every day, what you need to do, you need to update yourself. As we are connected each and every moment with our brain consciously or unconsciously, that is my question. You need to use your brain consciously. And my last question is, what can we do more with our brain? Because we need to search, what can we do? So be like a brain, make your brain more active. So here we came here to listen about leadership. So first of all, ask yourself, are you a good leader? Are you a leader or who am I? First, you need to talk to yourself. Who am I? Am I a leader? Like it's not leader uh, in organization or institution or somewhere else, but you can be a good leader among your surrounding, even your friend circle. Like, you know, you are going for a trip and you can be a leader. If you can organize, if you can plan something very good way, you can be a good leader. So it's just yourself, you ask whether you are a good leader so that you can seek the attention to others. So moving to the next slide, I'm putting here three pictures of three personality. The first one, I think you all know, Justin Trudeau, he's the uh, prime minister from Canada. And also the second person is uh, the owner of Microsoft, Bill Gates. And the third person, I, I'm not sure whether you know him, but he's actually a national hero, we call it, uh, Mashrafi bin Murtaja. And he's actually a cricketer who has a very inspiring lifestyle and leadership skills that is uh, uh, the young generation in Bangladesh, they're following him because of his generosity, because of his uh, leadership skills, his power of uh, his talking, his attitude. So why we call all three of them a good leader? Because, because of their success, because they made it a very good way. Why people would like to go to Canada? Why people like uh, to follow uh, Justin Trudeau's Facebook page or all his movement because he's a good leader. Why people don't like uh, Donald Trump and why people like Justin Trudeau, you need to compare. And how they made it a success because they all have a very good capabilities in their life and they do it very successfully. So there are some certain uh, characteristic, I believe you people, and those who are, would like to be a leader in future, they need to practice and they need to make it in their own life. Moving to my next slide, I'm uh, sharing here a very light picture, very happy picture. You see the picture of uh, a child and his, uh, his or her, her father. So what you are looking here is like uh, the girl, the baby, the girl, is uh, trying to work and the father is actually behind her. Uh, he is not letting her uh, go, but he is actually following her. So a leader versus order. This is my title. So a leader must be act like a father. That means you need to track your subordinate, you need to track your team members so that you can protect them and you can guide them for the next step. So a leader must act like a father. So you know, like what actually our fathers uh, are doing for our life. Like they let us go for study, for trip and everywhere. And they always look for, uh, for the betterment, how they can guide to us. So a, be a leader, you need to be like, as like a father. You need to guide them, you need to protect them, you need to track them. So that is a good, that is a capability that you need to think about. So be like a father if you want to be a leader. So think out of the box. That is what we always tell. But to me, I say think out of the world, not actually the box, because everyone is thinking out of the box. So what is next? You need to think about 
out of the world. So I'm giving her two pictures. It's Elon Musk. You know all of uh, all about him, I think. So he's moving the SpaceX officially, and uh, what he is actually doing, what other people is not doing. So he is actually giving the example. He's creating the example and giving the idea of space tourism. That means there is there will be some time, maybe ten years, maybe twenty years, maybe fifty years. We'll not think about moving to other countries, but we'll we'll save the money and we'll try to uh, visit out of the world to the spaceships or out of the world. So you need to think out of the world from now and on if you want to be a leader because the world is moving so fast and you need to fit for that. Moving to my uh, next slide, why we work in clubs or associations? Why I came this point? I said, why, why, why? Because very big question. Because in your university, in our university, and everywhere, students are very active in the clubs, student clubs, associations, groups, and why people uh, should work there. I will uh, give you the answer to my next slides. So through my presentation, I'll share you my life experience with these leadership uh, ideas and how I uh, practice it throughout my, uh, my student life as well as my current professional life. So I will answer you why, what, and how. So here I'm giving you uh, two of my picture from my student life. The picture is uh, taken during 2009 or 10. So uh, you see my left side picture. I'm, it is, uh, I think my final graduation day or my maybe the third year, uh, one of the picture. So when I was student in the university, in Daffodil International University, I was very active. I was uh, joining different clubs. I worked with different clubs and associations. So day and night, I moved to the university uh, campus. I gathered with the students. I lead them. I talk to them. I move. I make some groups and I join in the clubs. I go to different associations, make collaborations, do joint events. So why I did it and how it helped me. So I will give you the answers. Through my uh, student life, I did all these activities just to empower myself. I did it unconditionally with passion. I never think uh, what will be the outcome, but I did it 100% uh, with my dedication. And I was sure that someday I will get the benefit. I will get the true outcome of this, all my works. Of course, it's not only the benefit, of course, the things that I'm getting is knowledge. So I'm giving you some example. So when I was a student, I used to work day and night. I come to the university at morning, maybe 9 a.m. and leave the campus maybe in the evening. So all my classmates, they just come to the university. They just do the class without any engagement within the community of the campus. And they just do the class. They leave uh, after the class giving the exam, but they don't have any idea. They don't have any uh, passion to learn something new, do some works. So when I was very active uh, in the university life, my friends used to say, please focus on the study. Don't go for those kind of uh, voluntary activities. My cousins, they were always laughing that uh, you will not get any benefit of that. But I was sure that yes, someday, these all the activities I have done, I did it myself must have some outcome because I have learned so many things out of my study, out of the books, and that actually helped me to talk in front of you all. And of course, the thing that I'm doing now, the job, a good career. So many of us are very much focused on CGPA. I'm sure that you, some of you, most of you as well the same. But when I was a student, I was not focused on CGPA. I always do self-study, like wherever I go, wherever I'm moving, I'm always with my brain, what can I do? What can I find new things to learn? The practice from the real life and to make myself skillful. I still see my, uh, my personal email address when I was a student. I see when I was maybe the first year student, the email I have written at that time is very much professional. As, and very much good. So I see that that time when I practice those professional email writing, 
that helped me when I joined the first in the university uh, as a, uh, in the international affairs. So what I suggest to you to compare yourself with your classmates, with your surrounding, even maybe the 50 people here with you, maybe you compare yourself. You just don't need to think all the time about CGPA. Okay, I need CGPA high, I need A plus, and I need four out of four. But what you need to be fit for the career, for the future, to be a good leader, you just need the understanding of global perspective and understanding of the whole environment so that you can fit with the world and you can fit and you can work on it. So here you see the picture of a hunter, a hunter who is looking for an animal or something to hunt. Why I'm giving you the picture? Because be a good leader to fit for the world, you need to search for the opportunity. You need to act like as a hunter because you don't know which opportunity, which thing will bring you to the top and which thing will give you the best outcomes of your life. So my suggestion is don't stop applying for any opportunity. Don't, uh, don't stop to search for the opportunity and keep doing it until you stop. That means the, till the last breath. You need to search for the opportunity. You need to move on. And of course, you need to be a global citizen. But what is the benefit to be a global citizen? You see, I, I'm giving a picture of myself because I always like to share with my own story uh, because I have learned a lot from this all kind of these uh, best practices. So when you be a global citizen, when you think global, when you mix up with the people from many different culture and community and the countries, you will have multicultural understanding. That means when you meet with the people, you will have experiences and beliefs of diversified groups. You will think about them and your, more, your mentality will be broad. That means you will not focus on only your culture, but you will have a diversified knowledge and you will feel the respect for others. And when you can fit with any situation, with any culture, then you can actually move for anywhere. And you can find your career, not only you in your city, in Jakarta, not in Indonesia, even not in Asia, in anywhere in the world. So first you need to be a very focused and then you need to connect yourself globally so that you can fit anywhere in the world and you find yourself in a good career. Of course, it will help you to be a good leader, of course. Moving to my next slide. We always know that early to bed and early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. That is a quote. But to me, I found traveling makes a man, makes a mind healthy, wealthy, and wise. How? I'm giving you the examples. You see, it's a great lesson because for traveling, you don't need to give quiz, assignment, presentation, examination. It's just within yourself and how you learn and how we do practice it in your life. So the first thing and the most important thing is you have to be very positive and you have to find scopes. As I said to you, you have to be a hunter. You need to search for opportunities. So I, I must say Ujjayi is also giving you many opportunities. So you need to look for that. You need to apply. You need to be uh, focused on traveling. So the more you travel, the, it will help you in your mind. How? Because when you travel, you know, like sometime in your friend circle, some of you become friend, uh, frustrated and you say, please, let's go uh, somewhere, maybe in the uh, sea area or mountain area. Let's go. I'm, I'm feeling frustrated. I, I need to uh, go hang out. So the thing is, when you are traveling, it leaves you frustration. And when you travel, you come back with the luggage full of knowledge and understanding of multicultural aspects. And of course, when you have, you, when you, don't you have any frustration and when you have luggage of understanding and knowledge, of course, you will feel a wise uh, mentality inside of your mind. So automatically, automatically your, your brain will boost up with more achievements. So let me go to the next slide. So be passionate to grab it. You know, 
you need to believe in your dreams when you believe in your dream you should be passionate to grab it that means when i was a child like maybe grade 4 or 5 i had the passion to travel all around the world so i always talk to my parents like i need a career i want to be like someone who will travel all around the world so that was like a dream inside of myself and i was very passionate about it so i worked on it i never knew that what i will do but i worked on it i was i was believing myself so when i finished my graduation the next day the university chairman uh, the president I, we call you call it president we call it chairman so he called me in his office and he gave me the responsibility to work for the international affairs uh, of the university and we started the office we started working and through this working and to be very passionate about uh, this job and internationalization to be a global citizen i started traveling around the world and of and of course alhamdulillah uh, being a muslim I, I must say that i have traveled uh, around 23 plus countries around europe asia africa these countries and hopefully it will continue day by day so i was very passionate about my dream that of course i must travel because the more you travel the more you feel happiness satisfaction in your heart in your mind and of course that will help you to build your leadership so being a good leader <clears throat> being very perfectionist and to use your brain the most you need to focus on the word perfectionist that means without being a perfectionist you cannot be a good leader because if you don't make it more perfect your the people who are working with you or who are under your um, leadership will not be that good or perfect if you are not a perfect person so every people, the people, the normal people, they are thinking 100%. Like if I ask someone, uh, are you confident? This is 100%. The second time I ask, uh, are you confident? 200%, then they become, you know, shaky. So my point is, you need to be confident. You need to be perfectionist about anything. 200%. That means highest best. If you give it 200%, then you get at least you know more than 100 percent more than your expectation so think beyond and look for the gaps the problems inside of your work inside of your associations or wherever you are belonging so that you can find it uh, a, a good way and you do your highest best of course and you need to do self-evaluation regularly well, what i am doing i am doing wrong and I'm doing right. So you need to evaluate yourself and you need to be very perfect. Eh? Be a perfectionist. So, and that will bring you more to a leadership uh, skills. And of course, being a good leader, you cannot be an uh, ordinary people, ordinary person to be a good leader. You must have some extraordinary skill to be a good leader. That means multitasking is one of the good things that you need to grab, you need to practice from now and on. So when you have a capability of doing multitasking, that means one side you can do something and other side you can also think about something. And whenever you go for something to organize, if you can do so many things together, and if you have that skill, everyone will start thinking about you and they will start uh, looking at you for the solution. They will come to you, they will think about you. And the way you work on it, you will be a good leader. And you can give your direction to many different types of people. Like if you are a, uh, if you are president of the club or associations in your university, you will see the general member will come to you for a question. The treasurer will come to you for uh, help, maybe financial help. If you know about design or something about photography, the creative media team will come to you for the guideline. So when you become a leader, you need to have the idea of different aspects and you need to do practice and do the things at the same time so multitasking is very important to be a good leader so you must have that skill and start practicing it so be a good leader you need to think different way that means you need to be creative you need to think other ways that people are not thinking so i'm giving you here two image that means the first one is actually a magazine uh, that published in bangladesh is about cartoon and it's a comic uh, magazine in Bangladesh. So one day I was uh, looking at uh, this uh, picture that is posted by one of my Facebook friends. 
and suddenly it came to in mind. So as we organize the summer programs every year, so due to COVID-19, this year we cannot do the summer program offline on campus. So what we need to do, we need to do it online. So online, we cannot use the real life pictures because we are not doing it uh, on campus. So suddenly it came to in mind, why not we do it uh, using the cartoon, make it a bit interesting for the social media so that people uh, keep it attention. So be a leader, you need to be creative. You need to think the other ways. That means, as I told you before, you need to think out of the world, out of the box. So do start it, do practice it to think different way and find something new so that everyone think about it as well, the way you are thinking. So I'm sharing here uh, one of my picture uh, that is actually taken in Singapore, one of the conference. I'm telling you the story and uh, the story will come out with the outcome what I'm going to tell you. I was going to attend a conference uh, in Singapore and suddenly I meet, uh, I was doing different meetings for every meeting was about a half an hour and I was waiting for another meeting. And suddenly I, I saw this guy, he's actually my friend, his name is Oscar from Switzerland and he's actually working for the organization Asia Europe Foundation. So I didn't make any meeting schedule with him, but I had 15 minutes empty time in my hand. So what I did, I visit him I talked to him, I, I asked him about the organization. We did uh, some, you know, to know each other's organization when we exchange our cards. And, and that actually the beginning of a very good partnership, very good opportunity for both of our organization. And after two years, this organization gave me the opportunity to travel in their one of the biggest program of uh, national, uh, their different ministers and university authorities to come and discuss. So in that program, they, uh, they gave me the funding to join with all, you know, like full funding. So you don't know when you will actually meet with your, uh, you know, the desired success. So what you need to do is do networking. You don't know who will bring you something so never, uh, never think about negative way, never regret to smile, greet and talk to people, do networking and give value to it because you don't know who will bring the success for you. So you meet and, but uh, one thing I must say, don't irritate people because if you are irritating, then people will not share their scope to you. Moving to the next slide, being a good leader, you need to fight with yourself. Also, you need to talk to yourself. Most of the time, what we do, whatever comes to in our mind, we just leave it and we just give the command or we just do it. But what the things I tell you, you need to think about the, the word, the command or the things you are giving to other people. You need to think about it and you need to talk about uh, it with yourself. So you talk about it when you go for sleep, you maybe think about 20 minutes of your whole day, maybe the things you have done, maybe the things you will do tomorrow. So you think about that so that you can judge your steps. Am I right or am I wrong? And of course, uh, the things that I do, when I go to sleep, I do think a lot, the things I have done. When I'm traveling, I have empty time in my hand. I look at the sky to the clouds and I think, what I'm doing uh, these years, what I'll do next two years. And of course, you must think after any mistakes, how it happened, why it happened, why I, I'm not a good leader to do this kind of thing. And of course, it's a good practice if you can talk in front of mirror. It's not an easy thing, of course, it's sometimes it seems funny, but of course, if you can talk in front of mirror, you will get some benefits, like you can judge yourself, you know? Talking to the eye, to the same person who you are, uh, you are fighting inside of yourself is also something important. So you talk to yourself and of course you fight with yourself with the decisions you are doing. So being a good leader, you need to fight with yourself and you need to prove that, yes, the things I'm doing is really right. Keep practicing your skills. You don't know, you don't know when you will actually need it. Because here you see some of my skills that I have gained maybe 10 years back, but still I need it. Although I'm working for a different background, maybe I'm working for the international affairs, but I, as I have some extracurricular or extraordinary skills 
that I have practiced when I was student, that is actually very helpful for me now in, in my career. Because, you know, like when I'm working in the international office, we, we do send our students different countries. We receive students uh, in our university and also working with the university branding. As I know, I skipped writing since 2009. It helped me to have some value addition in my career, in my, in my practice in the, in the office. So sometimes I do my brain to the university branding team. Sometimes I, I guide to the university campus TV or radio. So that is actually helpful. Even it is helpful for my career. So wh whatever you know, maybe you know painting, maybe you know uh, singing. So do practice it. Don't spoil it if you're moving to other different types of career. You don't know, you don't know when you will actually need it. So my guideline to you is like, you need to keep practicing your skills so that you can use it whenever you need it. So being a good leader, my uh, guideline to you, you know, like the world is not a very positive part uh, for our life because the world is always uh, uh, for us that we need to struggle. We need to struggle to uh, go to the top somewhere and people are always in our back. So what you need to do, you need to study politics for your life. That means you don't need to be a bad person. You don't need to do politics for something to do bad, but you need to have the knowledge of politics inside of your mind so that you can protect yourself. Just you can protect yourself from the dirty politics because when you are going up, when you are going to a success um, step, people are always uh, behind you to talk about you, to make yourself you know, uh, weak in your steps. It can be from your career, it can be from your friend zone, even from class. So you need to have some idea, you need to have some knowledge about politics so that how can you save yourself? So you do it. I'm going to show you a video that is actually uh, one of my favorite and I must say it is uh, OD to watch. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. But today is a gift. That is why it is called the present. I think you have got the message. Like yesterday is history. Tomorrow is mystery. We don't know what will happen tomorrow. And uh, we cannot uh, take it back from the history. But today is a gift. That means the present, the things that you are now doing is a present from the Almighty. So you need to use the best of it. So you don't need to wait for it, but be grateful that you are what you were doing and you need to do it the best way. You need to do it with your best dedication. Like, as I said, maybe 200 percent so that you can fit. You can think, yes, I'm doing giving my best. So you need to be focused on your uh, current situation. So here I'm sharing some of my pictures as I always like to share uh, the learnings and practices I have done in my life, even currently I'm doing. So what you need to do, you need to do the things uh, you like because that will make you happy and satisfied. You know, like uh, I was thinking what actually I like. Suddenly I was thinking what makes me happy? What makes me satisfied? So I think, okay, food is the thing and tasting different food, different restaurant is a thing. It's a very silly thing, but actually it's very helpful for me that I feel satisfied. So I try, I, I always look for food, uh, different tasting food. And uh, what I like, I like networking, making new friends from different countries and different um, you know, ethnic groups. So uh, I go for a trip, I go uh, for different, you know, occasions and making new friends, different country, uh, traveling different countries. So that is, a, I like, so I keep continuing it. And of course, like the last picture I'm showing you that when I was teaching to my school, the, uh, the Fudil International School, I was uh, moving and dancing with my students and make them very comfortable with me. So that, you know, sometimes uh, the school children, the students, 
they uh, walk with me on the road and we talk about life we talk about some knowledge they're very they're not that matured but still uh, i i find them friendly with me because the way i'm teaching them and the way i'm moving with them they became very friendly to me so as uh, the picture i'm showing i like dancing i like food and i like networking the things that i'm like i like i do it more wherever i get the chance i do it more because when you are satisfied inside you know, of your mind you can do a better thing you know when you, you when you are happy inside you can contribute more to the people you are working so being a good leader if you are frustrated if you are not satisfied with your steps you cannot give more you cannot give the best outcomes from your own learning so what you need to think what i like and you need to practice it you need to keep it on your life never regret it so to be a good leader you need to have two skills. The number one is patience, and number two is less anger. You know, like you are a leader, but you have a very bad uh, attitude, like anger face, and no one, you, you know, your subordinates or the people, those who are coming to you, they, if they fear about you, they will not come to you, they will not think about you. Maybe today, they will think about tomorrow, but maybe not after that, they will not come to you. So what you need to do, you need to think about patience and you need to move uh, anger from your life so be a good leader you need these two skills that will actually the golden key of leadership so do practice it if you are still not good at uh, uh, minimizing your anger you start it so when you become angry what you need to do maybe you drink water maybe you look look at the sky the sky is very big so you start practicing how can i uh, minimize my angerness so you need to do it to be a good leader these are the best practices so uh, these things are not usual but i'm doing it uh, uh, I'm, i'd like to share with you because i think these uh, there are some you know like uh, hidden power to your mind to your, uh, to your life dealings if you do these kind of practices in your life you know, choose your own adventure and study. I have sharing here two different aspects. One is actually study, another is actually watching film. So if you like uh, watching movies, you do watch it more. What kind of movies you will watch? You know, there are many good films, there are many good uh, story based, dramatic uh, movies you can find all around the world. Of course, like one of my favorite movies from Indonesia is uh, Laskar Pilangi. I think I have watched it uh, seven or eight years back. That is one of my favorite movie. And also Laskar Pilangi and As Laskar Pimpipi, I guess the second part. So that is one of my favorite movie from Indonesia. So the thing that I like, I like watching movies. Every day I watch at least maybe one movie. Sometimes maybe I cannot, but I still keep doing it. Because when I watch movie, I try to get the message from the movies because the movies are coming from the life. The same way the books. If you like to read books, do it. Take uh, the message, take the lesson from it so that you can use those messages in your life from the movies, from the books. So choose your own adventure and do take the message for your own life. So when you are working with any associations or any office or any organization, you need to build trust. Being a leader, to be a leader, you need to build trust. I'm giving you two examples from two game about leadership and building trust. Think about, I don't know if you know about the game cricket. In cricket, there is the rules, like uh, when the game start, uh, they have some time, like maybe we call it over, maybe five over. Uh, that time, the player need to do the best, give the best effort because the other players from the opposition party, they are in a close situation and he can hit the ball outside of the field for a better score. So this five uh, over is called power play. So when you start working some organization or maybe in a club or somewhere, if you want to take the attention of the leader or if you want to be a good leader, you need to practice power play. That means when you start something, you need to give your best effort. You need to give it the more. So you need to give some extra pressure. You need to take risk. Yes. So dear boss, yes, I can do it. 
please give me this task. I will complete it. I will give it to you by tonight. So when you take the risk, when you can give your best using your power play, the boss will look at you. Yes, this person is very good. And I can, I can give him the more, uh, maybe more scope to work and give him some responsibility. So the way your higher position will believe you, you need to make this way and you need to use your power play. So when you are interning to some, somewhere, maybe in your career, you need to use your power play. And the same way, you need to trust, you need to believe, and you need to make a good friendship with your coworkers. Maybe they are juniors, maybe they are seniors, maybe the same position, but you need to use uh, trust with your uh, teammates, the coworkers, so that they don't think that you are something bossy. Maybe you are not, um, you know, maybe honest, and maybe you are too, uh, you are not wise enough. So. But my guideline is to you, it is wise to be friendly and cooperative and trusted. So do practice this to be a good lead leader. Using your power play when you start and keep the office, keep the environment, keep the club, wherever you are, being a good leader, make it safe. And act as a change maker. You know, to create attention, you know, when you walk on the street, you will see so many people, they never notice something is on the road. And some people, they can notice the things very easily. So you need to be like a change maker. I'm giving here two examples, like a road where there is a wall, maybe it was a, a dirty wall, or maybe there was nothing here. So maybe everyone was moving the street, but one artist was moving through this way and he was thinking maybe I can paint it and I can make it as like an art. So you need to work as like an artist here. So you need to make a change when you come to uh, somewhere as a leader. So make a, the environment friendly, transform the environment and set as like, a, as like a leader. Moving to the next slide, never regret your desire. That means I'm giving here uh, some silly pictures uh, that uh, I do practice. This is very silly, but this is, that is really helpful for your own understanding. So, you know, like when I was, uh, when I was very young age, like maybe grade seven, eight or nine, I used to play cricket. But uh, my parents, uh, you know, they always pressure me for study and study. So when I go for study, I always think about it okay, I cannot, uh, I couldn't play cricket, I couldn't play cricket or something like that. And I, I give example of ice cream, this is very silly, but this is really helpful. Like uh, when I was student in the university, uh, from my home uh, to my university, is, it's a bit far, not very far, maybe half an hour. So there was, a, there was a famous ice cream shop. So if I go by maybe car or something, then I will miss of eating this because I have to stop somewhere. So what I do, I walk, and I, 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 I buy the ice cream and I, I take it. So it's very silly, but without it, maybe when I'll go to the home, I will feel something, you know, uncomfortable of my, if I could have it. So never regret your desire. Whatever it is, if it is small, if it is big, you know, money will be back. You know, money will be back, opportunities will be back, everything will be back. But of course, the desire you have missed. So whatever you do, you need to be confident that never regret your desire. And being a good leader, that I'm sharing you a quote, to forgive is the highest and most beautiful form of love. In return, you will, leave, you will receive untold peace and happiness by Robert Mueller. So love is something limited. So far, I, I feel, but forgiveness is, you know, like, uh, infinity, the sign I have shared here. So you need to forgive people. You, you will see in your, in your group when you are a leader that there, there will be many people uh, who will be working with you, will do mistake, will do politics, will do so many things with you. But the thing is, you need to forgive them. If you feel it there, you are not safe with them, please leave their attention, leave their way. You need to choose a different path or you need to, you don't need to look at them. So you need to forgive them and you need to move on. 
uh, one more thing I would like to share. I think emotional uh, matter is always uh, very serious for someone uh, to move on for the next stage of life. So sometimes what we do, we share sad when you broke up with your you know, fiance or someone, you share with your people. So the, my point is, you need to be selective in terms of sharing your pain or weakness. I'm sharing here uh, the lamp. You know, I think all of you know about the lamp of Aladdin because this is a good example. What we have seen, I think most of you have seen the movie Aladdin. So what Aladdin did, like in the movie, if the lamp is kept uh, to someone who is a good person like Aladdin, he will use uh, the genie, you know, uh, in a good way, not something bad way. And when the lamp is to uh, is collected by someone bad who is not ill, uh, I mean in ill mentality people, he or she will use it in a bad way, or he will give command to the genie uh, bad way or something to harm people. So it's the same way. So think about the pain inside of the lamp. So you need to think whom you will give the lamp, who will keep safe your pain, or do help yourself. Uh, to overcome it or maybe use it to make you you know weak they will you know take the revenge to tell somebody or maybe share with somebody and it will not be safe so be selective in terms of sharing your pain or weakness that is actually because when you become a leader you will see many people inside of uh, you know in, in your back they will work behind you they will make uh, they will try to search your weakness so when you share your weakness your pain you need to be selective to make yourself as a safe leader so i'm i think i have only a few slides left i'm i think uh, too big my slides but still i think uh, still it's interesting some way believe in miracle when you are leader when you are a person if you're not a leader even as a person you need to believe in miracles because you don't know what will happen next and what might not happen so i'm sharing here two pictures one is actually a movie from uh, from india a hindi film i think uh, some of you might watch it or may think of watching it so uh, it's actually based on true story so in this movie uh, the girl uh, uh, I mean, the girl who actually died a few years back, I think 2016, he was a miracle child. Like maybe he, uh, she was not uh, supposed to born, but uh, she has a life. She lead it until uh, she's maybe 17 or 18 and she survived it quite long. So life is a miracle. You need to believe in miracle. I have shown here uh, one of my pictures that is actually me uh, back in 30 to 31, 30 years back. So here is my picture. What I am showing here, because I also uh, believe in miracle, because when I was, uh, uh, I, when I was born, uh, I was not crying. Like just uh, when I was born, my mother uh, thought that maybe I'm dead. I'm a dead body. So he was screaming and then I started screaming. And uh, uh, people thought that, yes, I'm okay. I'm not a dead body. So that is something miracle and you need to believe in it you don't know what uh, opportunity is coming what will come next maybe this afternoon what has come to you so believe in miracle and don't be frustrated on it i'm sharing here uh, my another picture uh, that means what i would like to tell you that before uh, being a good leader you need to be a good human being you need to have some respect to your uh, family to your parents uh, to your surrounding, of course. So my guideline to you is that uh, to know the point that parents are a gift, great gift of Almighty. That means uh, those who have parents, of course, they know that what they are. Sometimes we become angry. Sometimes we are not, uh, not happy what our parents are telling to us. But believe in that. Those who are not having their parents with them, they still miss it. So you need to care about your parents. You need to listen to them. You know, sometimes we are become busy in work or outside. Sometimes parents call to us. So sometimes we leave uh, the phone. We don't receive the call or something. So never do it. 
try to answer it, try to talk to them and leave some decisions to your parents so that uh, they feel that yes, my kids, my children are respecting me. And when they are happy, they will feel and they will actually, they're, you know, when they're happy, they're satisfied. There is a hidden uh, blessings from God will come to you. So one of my uh, best practice that I do till now that I'm proud of, like since my career is almost eight to nine years, I still share my, you know, when I get salary, I still share the whole salary every month to my mother. I give it to my mo mom's hand first. And I tell her, you run the family, you, you spend it. I never, I never keep it uh, to myself. So when I give it, my, my mother, of course, feel it, uh, you know, um, some happiness. Yes, his son is giving it to him. Still, it's seven or eight years. Maybe most of the uh, people in my age still don't do it. But I do it because I feel since my mother is still alive, I have the opportunity to give it. So you, I think, as a person, before being a good leader, you need to have some, you know, uh, good practices in your life so that you can deliver the same practice to your subordinate or the people and never compare to repay to them, to your parents. You know, sometimes we tell to parents that, okay, I will, I will give it, uh, you think that I'm, I, I'm doing this, I will repay you, never compare it. You cannot, you know, it's, it's not like loan, you just repay. So don't compare it to them. And uh, I'm sharing some of my other pictures that is be different and unique. You must be a unique personality. You must have a unique personality so that you bring your own style. I'm sharing here some of my photos that when I am a student, when I'm in a career, everywhere in my office with my colleagues, everywhere I am a different. Why? Because when you are different, you will you can seek the attention, you will have a different personality, and it will help you to consume, you know, consume your frustrations, consume your uh, weakness and everything. So be different and be unique. Be a little bit crazy. You see my photos. Uh, I'm serious here today because I'm giving a serious presentation on leadership from one university to another university. But if I move to my office, I'm different. I'm, if I go to my friend circle, I'm different. I do a lot of jokes. I do hang out. I'm very funny and I do enjoy my life. And of course, think your life your dealings uh, like childish, sometimes you be like childish, but act maturely so that uh, you don't spoil the environment. And of course, uh, smile with your heart. You know, smiling is a gift uh, from your heart to your uh, feelings. So smile, smiling is a big thing. And enjoy your life because uh, whatever we do, whatever we are achieving, whether we are leader, whether we are not leader, we must enjoy our life. Because life is a short, when you, are die, uh, when you are going to die, you don't know what will, uh, will, you will live in this world. So until you die, you need to enjoy your life. Do the good things for people, do the good things for your own, and travel, enjoy your life because it's short. And the picture is taken in Bali, of course in Indonesia. So that is all about my presentation about leadership. So I'm here to talk about your answers and questions. I must say that I didn't take any questions from the chat box yet, but I will now talk to uh, all of you guys if you have any questions. And uh, I'm going to give the floor to the host. So thank you everyone. Sure. Okay, thank you very much for this awesome presentation about being a good leadership. Uh, I personally really enjoyed this presentation and it's really a good insight. I have so many questions for you also, and mm -hmm. there's already so many questions from everyone. Yeah. But first, as the MC, I have a special privilege to ask you first, okay? Okay, sure. so uh, for me, I want to ask you, uh, Mr. Rehan, what do you think about the essential about leadership concept? Because uh, is it about more about managing people or achieving the target? Because I do personally think mm -hmm. of this dilemma. Sometimes I think to think to, uh, to finish the task, to reach the target. So it could make me become more stiff when it comes to others. Yeah, you got the way, uh, question. Mm -hmm. So for being the leader, the thing is you need to set your goal, of course, first. 
like if you are not uh, if you are not uh, confident about your goal if you don't know when to finish you need to set your timeline so the thing is of course uh, you need to think about the goal how can you achieve it and you need to set you need to work it out you know you need to make some a timeline okay these are the things without timeline without much planning you cannot finish it maybe you can finish it scattered way not a planning way you know there are many people they finish the work many different way only the leaders the good leaders the people they can finish it you know systematically like okay i will do it then i will give it this thing you need to make it short okay this works is not done by me i will give it to those other people they will finish on behalf of me and i will guide them so you need to set the timeline and you need to set it how you will do it so that is most important you need to set your goal okay and the our my second question is Uh, yeah. Sometimes we hardly manage our anger, yeah, Mister. If we if we know there's Sorry? a mistake, we hardly manage our anger. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Uh, so so there's uh, blaming someone is very satisfying sometimes. And what mm-hmm. should we do to manage it? Maybe you can give an like a uh, example. Managing anger. Yeah. Okay. So for myself, managing anger is like, you know, when you're angry, it is not on not for uh, the whole day. anger is very limited time maybe 10 minutes the 5 minutes even maybe 1 minute like you were angry the word came in your you know in your tongue maybe you are just going to spell it so what you need to do you need to maybe look at you know down and you need to think uh, wisely okay i'm not going to tell it maybe after 10 minutes you know sometime in our work we feel very ang- angry uh, in email uh, in the work so we think that okay i'll now respond it i will destroy it i will not going to work it but what you need to do you need to wait it you need to step back a bit or you you go for you know a walk or you drink some water you think something others you minimize your anger and then you do it and the way you do it it will be more um, more wise i think because when you are angry you actually give the wrong direction or the wrong reply sometimes it's not wise so my suggestion is to take some time Okay, it is very interesting because yeah. this session is not only about a uh, leadership skill but also about mental health, yeah. Okay. Of course. Okay, uh, yeah. I will uh read the first question and after this I will choose uh our friends from the chat box who will ask you directly and yeah. then at the end please choose uh two two person to be the best questioner. Okay. 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 Beside beside me and Bu Rini also. Okay. <laughs> sure. So this is the second question from mm-hmm. Rini Harjanti. Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe I just read it. Okay. Mm-hmm. So in your opinion, what should be prioritized when we will create uh, when we will create a dream? So creating a dream is you know like every person have so many dreams like myself if I tell that you need to think about the dreams that is possible. you know people has different dreams okay i want to uh, i want to be a entrepreneur i want to be like maybe a government job holder or maybe i want to be a maybe yeah, army person or something so there are different goals or different dreams so you need to think which dream you can actually achieve like of course like uh, you cannot do things that is beyond your uh, capability so you need to set like for myself when i completed my study i had a plan to go for making film like going to the industry uh, film industry but i found that if i go to that film industry that is quite risky because film industry is not a um, stable area like uh, i need to take care of my family so it's not like i am the only person is taking care of myself there is no other people here so what when you set the goal when you have the dream you need to think whether it is achievable for me by me like how can i do it whether i have those uh, ways like i have the money but uh, maybe if i want to be entrepreneur do i have that knowledge how can i sell it i have the money but uh, it it's also a capability but what you need to do is the thing is you need to think about uh, whether the capabilities whether i can do it so it is only when you can do it you set it yes this is the my dream and this is my capability you keep it inside of your mind and you think it whether i can do it 
if you believe in yourself you can move on so i was not believing believing in myself that i cannot be uh, at that stage to move on the film industry but i was thinking okay so when it is international affairs it is also part of my another dream so why don't i move for it move for that so i believe i change i just shift my uh, uh, one dream to another dream it's just shifting the dreams all I right that is uh, quite okay okay thank you very much and also thank you for burini for your question and i want to uh, call my friends a uh, desi friendly uh, mm -hmm. friendly okay hello desi okay you hello. Ask, uh, mr Shepard. hi desi hello mr hello. Han. hello okay thank you for the opportunities uh, what i want to ask is is it okay if we being a leader but our leadership leadership style is copied from others so being a copycat leader is okay or not mm -hmm. thank you so much thank you thank you yes of course uh, that is a good question uh, of course you need to copy some leadership skills because uh, the thing, the best practices that what I have shown you here, it is also something that you can copy. Of course, that I told you not to be angry. That is also you can copy. That is also something best practice that I am doing. So you can choose the way I told you that maybe you can read the books from uh, someone's lifestyle. You can uh, watch the movies or you can see someone, le a good leader from your own country. Maybe uh, your prime minister, maybe someone who is leading some organization, even the clubs, if you're working with the club you see how they're doing so what you do you don't uh, take all the capacities or all the good um, uh, all the practices he or she is doing but you do a checklist that these are the good practices that he is doing and i have those practices missing in my uh, in my dealing so you need to make a list and do practices because when you see other others uh, are doing the same and best practices and they're successful you can do it easily you just no need to copy uh, cope up with that. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Terima kasih. Okay, thank you very much, Desi. And then I want to call our next uh, question. For next question is Cecilia Oda. Hello, mm -hmm. Cecilia. Hello. Yeah. Hi, Cecilia. Hi, Mister. Yeah, selamat siang. Selamat siang. I want to ask uh, some question. Yeah. There is, if the people around us who lead ignore us as the leader, mm -hmm. how do we as the leader to control them? Thank you. Mm -hmm. That is a good question. So people are here actually to ignore you, but uh, you need to seek attention. Like, you know, you are working in a busy environment and everyone is you know in a competitive situation because everyone wants to go up so what you need to focus focus on yourself what people are doing people are thinking you need to uh, think about that so if you do good things maybe one day two day three day three days some uh, other days maybe people will start noticing you and to make it a good environment what you do you do some friendly activities like maybe someday you call them uh, to maybe have a cup of coffee or maybe if you have an opportunity that you are not going to apply or something you just pass it to other like okay you can do it and when you pass the opportunity when you give chance to them when you share the good practices they will start thinking okay he's a good person and his good things are maybe uh, good for us and they will start following you so the more you share the good vibes around your uh, people the more you will take the attention and of course one day you will be succeed it is up to you thank you thank yeah. you mister thank you all right thank you cecilia yeah yeah okay and I'm then very excited with the questions yeah and then for the third question is from michael kurniawan i will read it for you Mm -hmm. Okay, what things that make you motivated to get dedication or do things the best you can do every day? Maybe you can also give the tips for the procrastinator to be... Uh, can you, can you repeat the question again? Software. Yeah, can okay. you repeat it? Can you repeat the question again? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. What things that make you motivated to get the dedication to the things 
for the best you can do every day. Every day. Maybe it's about mm-hmm. self motivated to do the best for our best, yeah. For every okay. day activity. Okay. Okay. The question is uh, interesting as well. So what actually the things that are motivating me to the, do the things? The thing is like what I am doing is actually like my signature. You know, like uh, if I am uh, giving something to others, they will actually evaluate uh, me. So it is kind of like signature, like when I'm giving uh, something to other or doing some work, they will think who have done this work, who have designed it. You know, like when you make a film or when you design or when you do photography or something, if you take a good photograph and if you share it to social media, if it is very good, people will start liking it. People will love it and they will share it. So the same way, if you, if you do work in a good way, if it is uh, something very great, people will start uh, giving you star marks. So you need to have that feeling and that, uh, you know, like uh, speed inside of your mind that yes, I should do something every day so that people start uh, loving my works because that is my signature works. I think that is the best. Okay, and do you have tips for procrastinator? Because sometimes we have struggle to manage mm-hmm. our uh, task done. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, and then it's like a struggle for anyone who has problem to mm-hmm. manage time. Because sometimes for us as a procrastinator, we already have our agenda. Okay, today we will do one, two, three. But sometimes our brain is not working at all. So we just yeah. Google random thing. Yeah. So the thing is, what you are doing, you have to enjoy it. Okay. So without, when you can enjoy it, whatever it is, midnight, whatever, uh, whenever you are doing it, it doesn't matter. If you can enjoy it, okay, when you are going to work, if you are t- feeling boring, right? So you put your headphone in your um, head and you keep listening some maybe good songs or you eat something and do work. So mix up your work in a good environment so that you feel some motivation. Like in our office, what we do, like we always do have fun, we have singing, we have food and everything. And that is actually quite good practice. And the way we are doing in our office work, uh, like in international office, people are working, I think almost double than other offices because we are always having different, you know, um, connections or works in the international office. Of course, you know better as well, like you having uh, many works there. So in our office, we, know in, we should have something environment so that we can do very hard work. Um, so my guideline is like to be fit for the highest number of works, you need to love it. You need to find the ways so that, uh, it looks interesting to you. If you cannot make it, uh, if you don't love it, you cannot make it. All right. Thank you, uh, sir. And then, uh, I would like also to call Johannes Pandu Pradana. This is also an interesting question about personal branding. Okay, mm-hmm. Johannes mm-hmm. Pandu. Hello. Hello, Pandu. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Uh, my question is, uh, as a good leader, how mm-hmm. do you build your personal branding in your business and environment? And what is the key? And mm-hmm. one more thing. What challenges did you face while building this personal branding? Mm-hmm. That's all. Okay. So the t- thing is about personal branding. So I mean, there are two kinds of people. So one, uh, the number one is they didn't work. They always focus on personal branding. Like you do two, but you show it 20 uh, in social media or among the networks uh, or others. And there are people, they do 20 and they show 10. The thing is, how can we make it balanced? Uh, I'm actually making you two questions together. The thing is, when you do some good work, uh, you need to expose it uh, in your network. Okay, so the thing is, you don't need to uh, over uh, overreact or you don't need to be silent. If you do something good, let's share it with your colleagues, let's share it with others. And maybe as it is in digital era, we have social media, like maybe today I'm working, uh, I'm giving you a lecture here. So what I have done, I have engaging, I'm engaging my colleagues 
my other office colleagues here. So they are sharing it in social media. So it's not a lie or I'm not doing it something stuff, but it is also part of that self branding. And you don't need to be something, you know, too focused. But the thing is what you do, do the real things. Because if you do two and if you uh, sell it 20, Maybe you can uh, survive in the market maybe for one year, two year, but in long run, you will lose it people, because people will start noticing it and they will start ignoring you because they know that you just do the two and you are selling it 20. So you do 20 and you do it 10 or 15 so that people know that you have that quality. So never think about quantity, do some quality uh, of your self branding. So focus on the quality. That is my uh, guideline. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank All you. All right. Thank you for your question, Johannes Pandu. Okay. I would like to call. There's so many, so many questions in the chat box. I would like to call. Um, let me choose Dede Jonathan. Hello, mm -hmm. Dede. Hello, uh, Dede. Yeah. Hello, sir. Hello. Uh, okay, I have a question. Mm -hmm. As a leader, how to motivate people or person to do the work? Because in my experience, sometimes there are several persons who are not motivated to do the work and on the make decent result. Okay, I got your question. So the thing is like when you are working with a group of people, they are not motivated to work, right? That is your question. Okay, the thing is, uh, you need to contribute as well in the work. Like, you know, there is a um, difference between boss and leader. So what actually the boss, the people we, whom we call boss, what they do, they just give the command, please do this. They even don't say, please, they say, do it. Okay, and when it is leader, they actually just don't say command. They just do it with the team. So when you are doing the work with your team member, you need to be as like a general member as well, the same. So you show that you were doing it one night, you were giving the best of your uh, uh, skills or your time, the others will start following you. Like it is like, uh, as for example, if you are president or a leader of a club or associations, and if you're giving the command for every single work, if you yourself don't do anything, they will not do it. Because when you go to the field, you yourself do it every single work, your team member will also respect you, respect you from the inside and they will start doing it. So to motivate others, you also need to contribute from the very low level. And that is how you can energize your team member. That is what I believe. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Is that okay, the answer with you? Yeah, I realized that we must uh, first, we must move ourselves first to move right. higher. Right, right. Like you are not from the back, you have to be like in the front. Okay, it's very uh, motivational here, the answer from Mr. Raihan. Okay, well, another question, sir. Sure. I would like to read from the chat box mm -hmm. from Monica Ame. Uh, can you give us, as the introverts, some tips? Because some of us doesn't really like to do public speaking or join organization. Okay, very good question. All the questions are very good. You know, at the end, if you tell me to choose uh, two questions, I cannot do it. I will leave it to you because all the questions are actually uh, very good. Okay, the thing is uh, introvert. So by born, I think everyone is introvert. That is what I believe. And with the environment, uh, you become extrovert. So the thing is, you need to find your uh, lackings, why you are introvert, why you cannot talk in front of the people, and why you cannot look at to the people's eye, and uh, why when you go for um, giving speech or maybe talking, why you lose the words and, and you feel empty. So you need to find those gaps. You need to practice it as I, like, as I said in my slide, maybe you practice it in front of your mirror or you need to break it. The more you talk, okay, the thing is you call some people and you start talking to them, discuss to them. The more you practice, Maybe you practice with two people, the next day you practice with five, 
10, 20, 200, 2000, 2 million, like this way you can actually break it. It's not just one day. Uh, like I believe the day I started talking in front of the people, it was back in maybe 2009 or 10. And uh, I was shaky in on stage. I, I, I bring a script in front of me and it was full written. And then maybe after um, one or two years, I make it a short note, maybe just a, just like a slip, something written, just the bullpen. And from the next days, maybe I don't, I don't bring it uh, because everything is written in my mind. So the more you practice, uh, the more you can uh, break yourself. So you need to break yourself uh, from, you know, like just break yourself and you can do start public speaking. The more you break, it will make more sound. Okay, thank you very much. So that's the tip for the introverts. Yeah, I think yeah. this is the problem for anyone, uh, including me also, because I think yeah. uh, everyone has their introvert side on their, uh, right. in their person. Okay. Right. The more you break yourself, the more you, it will make sound. Okay. Thank you very much for the tip, thank sir. I you. also have a question uh, for myself, because uh, being when you talk about being perfectionist. Sometimes it comes to become a pro contra, where our teammates sometimes don't really agree in our way to finish something. So what should we do? Yeah, that is what, because you cannot be a perfectionist to each and every step. So you need to evaluate like, okay, these things, you need to set the meter. Like, okay, uh, to be a perfectionist, if, you, uh, if something is very important, and if it is uh, related to your, you know, your identity, like, yes, I am giving my effort 100% here. Maybe I'm giving somewhere my effort 20%. Where you are giving your effort 20%, if it is not uh, important then, or maybe less important, you don't need to be perfect that. Just leave it that. But if you see this is quite important, that is a matter of image of yourself, be a perfectionist. Don't leave it just uh, to give it but do it with okay the thing is in your question it was mentioned that it is about your teammate so of course it will uh, it will make it make it difficult when you become a perfectionist so the thing is you need to take the pressure also inside of you like uh, maybe you do the most of the works you make it done and maybe you give it the less part to difficult to handle the situation but end of the day you will feel some satisfaction as well as when you will give it to the the next level to someone to see your work they will of course evaluate you not only the day one day two maybe day 10 they will evaluate you yes you are the perfectionist and of course the heavy works or maybe the importance works will come to you so that is also important all right thank you very much because sometimes yeah. this this become a dilemma for us as a leader right. okay and then we have uh, two more questions the yeah. i will call first one from uh, Giselle. Mm -hmm. hello Giselle. hello okay. hello um, hello uh, mr Shell. i have a question that how do you manage yourself when you got stuck in direction while you want to chase your dream just like the stock is it can be like depressed or it can be like oh i'm really sad i'm really tired i just wanna get over of it and mm -hmm. how you manage that thank okay, you okay okay so a very good question uh Giselle. so when you uh, are lost in your dream or maybe you lost your way how you come back or how you move on that is actually the question what i so far i understand so the thing is when you see that it will not work maybe you don't leave the battle what you do you think uh, something what is missing the way i told in the before like maybe what elements are missing why i cannot do it you need to evaluate so you need to find the gap and uh, you bring those elements to your work. Sometimes it happens like uh, uh, when I was um, uh, starting my career. So, so in the middle of uh, maybe when I was two second year or third year, I start feeling maybe this is not my career. I was feeling empty. Then what I did, 
I did uh, research like, okay, which part of my work can be changed, can be interesting. So I need to find the gaps. I bring it in my practices. I break myself. I started doing it and one day I became success. And on the day I understood that, okay, these are the elements were missing in my practices. And I bring it, I started doing it and I find, okay, these are the things that was missing uh, maybe two years back. So you need to find those. And if you cannot still do it, you need to check other ways. Maybe this is not the right place to you. So you need to find maybe a different path. So you need to restart yourself. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Giselle, for your question. And then the last one, sir, yeah, is sure. from Dharma One. Hello, okay. Dharma One. Hello. Hi, uh, Intan and Sarayhan. Yeah. Thank so you. hi sir, uh, I'm from ISBSP 2020. Yeah, I know you. <laughs> yeah, Very thank good you. To see you. <laughs> okay, so I want to ask you a question. So the question will be, what are you, uh, what are you doing to ensure yourself to continue to grow and develop as a leader? Okay, thank you in advance. Thank you. Thank you. So um, answering to this question, I would like to example of uh, two company. One is like uh, the Microsoft or maybe the Nokia and the Android or maybe the Samsung. So you see that uh, the Nokia, why they lost their business and why we don't see them in the market now because they were not updated enough. And the, the world is moving with Android, the system and everything and they, they miss the train. And what others did, maybe the Apple or maybe the, the Android phone or maybe the Samsung, why they grabbed the market? Because they updated themselves day by day. So to be a good leader, what I'm doing, like every day I'm trying to update myself. Okay, today I'm working this only six tasks in my office or somewhere. The next day I think maybe this six tasks is not enough. I leave two of my tasks to others. And maybe I try something new. I search in the Google. I search inside of myself what I can do more. So every day, as like Android, every maybe every month or somewhat sometime when you connect it in the Wi-Fi, we update it. So the day, every day, what you need to do, you need to update yourself. To be a good leader, to fit with the current systems and every day, you need to update yourself. So the more you update yourself, you can actually fit with the system. Otherwise, maybe you will... You will lose yourself from the, the from the current background and you cannot uh, sit um, in this position as a good leader so far this is my best practices that you need to update okay, okay. okay. i get it thank you okay, thank you so much sir. thank you okay thank you very much sir uh, mr shit Rehan, for your wonderful uh, presentation let me thank summarize you, it for, yeah. uh, for everyone here so the first gem is life itself and the second one is brain, where we always using it. But the question is, are we already using it for effectively? Being a leader means we need character and capability to act like father, where the father keep track, protect, and guide. Leader have to think out of the world and understand global opportunities. The golden keys are passion and less anger. And also we have to be perfectionist, which is evaluate and set perimeter until we give our best not only a hundred percent, but until two hundred percent of our best. Okay, thank you very much, Sir Rehan, for your uh, sharing your experience and value that we thank could you. use in the future. But first, let us take a selfie because we are almost at the end of our event. Yes. Okay, everyone, thank you. Oh, Sir, I'm very sorry. Please choose two person who is the best questioner. Hmm. Actually, everyone actually give the good questions. That was actually, uh, I think it's quite difficult to choose two person. Uh, but the first one I choose, just a second. Uh, I think Desi. Desi, okay. Yes. And the, second one? And, uh, the question that was about um, uh, when I actually um, lose uh, something, I, I forgot the question. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, maybe it's in the uh, chat box. You may. Yeah, let me check in the chat box. Okay. 
But first, uh, for before the second one is announced, congratulations for Desi. You got uh, Imani voucher, Imani from Partnership and Promotion Office, Universitas Atmajaya Yogyakarta. Yeah, Cecilia. Cecilia. Okay, right. congratulations also, Cecilia. You yeah. guys both got Imani as a prize for right. best questioner yeah. from Partnership and Promotion Office. Okay, let us take a selfie. So everyone, please open your video. Okay, let us see. Let's see your beautiful face and your handsome face. Okay, everyone. Hello, Jessica, Adrian. Please open the video. Windy, Tirza, Kinta, Erika, Jessica, Chang. Emilia. Okay, Vilma is already here. Rifanka, hello. Good to see everyone. Yeah, so everyone is uh, has a beautiful face and smiling. It's really nice to see you. Okay, hello, Windy. You may open your video. Kinta, Quinta, Ellen, Amelia, Angela, Bagas, Juan, and everyone here. Okay, let us take a picture together. I will count to three. All right, one. Operator, ready to print screen? Okay. One, two, three. Cheese. One more. Do this for Atma Jaya. Like this? Uh, a. It's an A. Right? Yeah, this one. Atma Jaya. Okay. One, two, three. Cheese. Okay. One more. D for One that. more, one more. Please. For the audio, no, yes. Okay. Let's make D. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, thank you everyone. It's really good. Thank you. you. Smiling. Okay, maybe some uh one one or two of you will go to the hotel and see uh and uh talk to Mr. Raihan directly, yeah. Yeah. Of course, so I, I would like to thank uh, all the participants, those who are attending today and listening uh, very carefully to the whole session. And I'm grateful to Ujay for inviting me to give this lecture. Aku uh, Cinta Indonesia. <laughs> yeah, I, I visited twice Indonesia. I like nasi goreng ayam. <laughs> okay. Some other foods I miss, uh, and I hope someday again I will be visiting Indonesia, and maybe I'll singing the song sometime because I also know one uh, Indonesian song, name uh, I learned it in 2011. It's Hapus Aku. I don't oh, know. Hapus Aku. <laughs> yeah. So okay. uh, when I will be coming to your campus, maybe I'll sing for it uh, okay. for you all, and you can follow me in Facebook. You can uh, search my first uh, two part of the name. You, know, you can be connected. Uh, Ms. Iktan is also with me. And if you have any question further, you can also knock me in inbox. And uh, I really thank everyone, also my colleagues who are joining uh, here from my office. I thank all of them as well. So thank you very much. And I hope to see you all soon. And uh, congratulations to Ujay for 55 anniversary of the university. And good luck to everyone. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Shethan. Oh. Now, guys, we're almost at the end of our session. So after this, please fill the exit ticket. So uh, that will be displayed in the chat box and the shared screen. Okay. Uh, please, the exit link. And while, while our student here fill the exit link in the chat box and also on the display shared screen, maybe you want to uh, introduce your friends Mr. Raihan, who, yeah. who already with you? Yeah, sure. So here we have Mr. Najmul Islam. Hello, who, sir. He's from our office. Uh, Ms. Afsana Jarin Shairi, he, she's also from our office. And Mr. Kafiul bin Islam, he's also from our office. So these are my okay. teammates in the office. Okay. It's really nice to see all of you. Thank you for joining uh, this event with the IU and UAGY. Okay, so please, operator, please type in the chat box, the exit link also. Mm -hmm. 
and of course the participants those who would like to share their opinion and how was the session and if you like it or not or maybe the improvement or anything or if you have any question you can share with me as well later okay okay uh, so uh, mr rehan maybe you can type also your facebook in yep. the chat box your facebook name so we could follow you yeah maybe one of my colleague mr najmul maybe if you could uh, uh, paste the link of my profile here because i'm not connected in facebook now okay some tips for everyone if you want to get connect to mr rehan you can uh, follow him in the facebook and he is always on in the midnight yeah even at 3 am you can find me yeah so before we go to sleep just check our facebook and mr rehan will always on <laughs> right and anytime any guideline you can ask me i will act like like as your friend no problem okay so uh, there's already exit link in the chat box so the share screen please next go next for further information so this is contact if you want to get uh, to ask Mr. Rehan, this is the email for Daffodil University, International University, right. and his email. Also, if you want to have to get another information from Atma Jaya to have an event like this, please follow us on the Instagram. It's kkp underscore uagy, or email us in kkp at uaj at dot ac dot id. Okay, this is also right. website. Maybe you want to, you are curious about Daffodil uh, International University. Oh, right. maybe Sarehan, you can uh, tell us just a little about Daffodil yeah. International University. Sure, so Daffodil International University is uh, one of the top ranked private university in Bangladesh. We have uh, five different faculties. We have business and we have engineering, computer science. We have faculty of uh, science and technology, allied health science. We have humanities and social science. And we have 25,000 students uh, all over uh, the campus. And we have around 600 international students from many different countries. And if you would like to come to our university as an exchange student, please contact to the international office of Ujay. And we'll obviously uh, assess your uh, documents and we can invite you to come and join our uh, semester exchange program, hopefully next year, because currently it's pandemic and we cannot do any uh, offline exchange. And of course, we also do different kind of summer and winter school program. And we send a regular invitation to your university and you can apply and you can join as one of the participants here. Uh, Dharma One, uh, he also joined uh, in our last summer school program hosted in last July. So we welcome you uh, to the Food International University and in Bangladesh. So okay. count us. Okay, and sir, if you want to get more information about summer program, is it yeah. available in the website or in yeah. Facebook? In the, in the website, of course, and also in the Facebook page of the university. You can also follow the page and you can also check for the updates. All right. Okay, maybe some of, uh, some of you want to go to Dapo Deal. Yeah. If there's any chance, you can go to Bangladesh, okay, or maybe uh, India or in the our partner university. Right, because it's not that, that very far, and we have many similarities, and also you will be finding many interesting things in Bangladesh because we have also the largest uh, mango forest in the world. We have the longest sea beach in the world, oh. and you can of course uh, love it when you visit it. Okay, it's very interesting. <laughs> yeah. All right, okay. Okay, once again, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much, Mr. Sherfai Han, and also from our partner from Dakodil International University for joining us uh, today. And it's very awesome to have you guys joining us in this virtual lecture series. Congratulations once again for the winner. Thank you very much, and I hope you guys enjoyed this session. We'll meet again in the next event. I'm Intan Murni. Thank you very much, and see ya. Thank you, Intan. Thank you, everyone. See you next time. Thank you.